Okay, welcome to the team of Shalom Shir. Uh, this week's Parsha is Parsha Balak, and we're going to do the Nativo Shalom bit on what happened at the very end of the Parsha when uh, the children of Israel were uh, uh, seduced by the, the Midianites and the uh, into uh, improper relations as well as Avodah Zarah. So let's let's just back up and talk about what happened before that. Before that, we have the story of of uh, Balak, who was the king of Moab at the time, who asked Bilam, uh, who was a great sorcerer, to curse the Jewish people, and you have the whole the whole uh, story unfolding and basically uh, Bilaam, uh, although he tries to curse, uh, all his curses are turned into, into blessings instead of curses. So as uh, seeing that failed, uh, he recommended to Balak that uh, the way to get to the Jewish people was to uh, get them to act immorally uh, and then that would bring them to uh, idol worship. And so this this piece from the uh, Nativo Shalom starts at the towards the very end of the Parsha and it says Vayeshev Yisrael Bashitim the, the Jewish people uh, camped in the place called Shitim but Yahal Ha'amli's note and the the uh, the people began to commit adultery, harlotry, uh Albanos Moab with the daughters of Moab. And then it says, Vayatsma Yisrael Abal Paor. Then after describing this uh these sexual relations with the daughters of Moab, then it says. The Israel joined itself, but Israel joined itself to Baal Peor. Baal Peor was the idol that was was worshipped worshipped there. And then it says, Vayicharaf, Hashem be Israel, and God became very angry. Israel, and he started a big plague, a big plague about Israel. So what what happened here? These these women were enticing the men to have relations with them, and they would say, before you do that, they pull out a little statue of Peor and say you have to bow down to the statues. So that's how they got involved in the Vodazora. So the Tibo Shalom says, Hine Hoyakan Shtechatoim. We have two two different sins that are mentioned here. Achet Shabal Peor, the sin of Baal Peor of the idol, Achet Shabanos Moab, and the sin of uh, relations with the daughters of Moab. Umashman, it seems, Shahamagefa, the plague that I mentioned just a moment ago, was because of the uh, illegal relations, illicit relations with the daughters of, of uh, I'm sorry, it says that the, the sin was because of the Avodazara, because of idol worship of the idol Peor. As it says, Amuka Biyom Hamagefa, that they were. They were smitten on the day of the plague of the Var Peor because of the, the Avodah Zorah with this idol Peor. Bechein Kasim, and it also says, Horgu Ish Anashavat Smitim the Val Peor. The judges were instructed to uh, kill anybody who uh, was involved in this worship, this idol worship of Val Peor. Bechein Kasim, uh, I said that mashba shazel hay ikar achet. So from the, those words, it looks like uh, that's the that was the essence of the sin was the idol worship. Hine mesirat hadefesh shal pinchas. So what did pinchas do? Pinchas, the son of Elazar, the son of Aaron a Cohen, he took it upon himself to. Uh, when he saw the prince of the, of, of the tribe take one of the 
the princesses of, of Midian took it upon himself uh, to go and kill them in their tents when they were having sexual relations. And he did that at great risk to himself because here's the head of the tribe. He's going in himself and, and killing them. So that was Mesiris Nefesh. So the, the Antivit Shalom says, the, nefesh shall pinchas, the, the willing to sacrifice his life of Pinchas, was not on the, the sin of the uh, Avoda Zora, but was because of the sin of this relationship with the daughters of Moab. We have to understand this. Why, why was he putting his life at risk to see us nefesh because of the this immoral relationships that were going on with the Bnei Israel and the the daughters of Moab instead of the main part of the sin, which was idol worship. So why was he doing that? There's a general prohibition that, that God says, do not have relations with a, an Aramit, with a, a Canaanite, a uh, Canaanite woman, an Aramit woman. Uh, but the that that kind of prohibition is simply a uh, it's one that's not punishable by death, as he'll point point out in a moment, uh, and it's, uh, it's it's subject only to uh, lashes, and it's it's a lob, it's a it's a negative commandment, whereas a vodazora is one of the the principal commandments. So why why did Tibor Shalom is asking why did uh, why does the Torah mention Pinchas' act with relation only to the what seems to be the lesser evil? Kamoshama Harambam, as the Rambam says, Shlo Asra Torah, Derech Zanut, Rak Mechinoso Makas Mardos Midiver Sofrim. The Torah doesn't prohibit uh, this uh, this kind of immoral relationship, uh, except as a as a negative commandment for which you're subject if you violate it to lashes, according to the rabbis. <coughs> Excuse me. And there's a dispute as to what kind of a commandment is is this. Is this really a commandment? Is this God saying, I just don't want you doing this, but not a commandment? So there's two different schools of thought as to whether it is or is not a negative commandment. We will hate Baal Por, but nobody has any questions about the sin of, of against, about the idol Por. Shua Voda Zora. That's, that's definitely idol worship and the penalty for idol worship once somebody has been forewarned with witnesses and told what will happen, penalty is death. So we have to understand. Why if if you're gonna try to make a tikkun, try to repair this sin, why is it done with Pinchas and not through through Moshe Rabbeinu? All the 40 years that the children of Israel were in the desert, Moshe Rabbeinu would save them uh, from anything that happened. He asked God to save them, and God would save them. Why does Pinchas have to come in and do this? Some say that the, the reason is, it so it has to do with the aspects of Amuna, faith in God, and Kadusha, making yourself holy, becoming holy. 
Shalavodas Hashem, that there are the two ways, the two principal ways of serving God through Amuna, through faith in God, and through Kedusha, making yourself holy. They're connected to one another. And if a Jew goes and, and, and is successful and is uh, has a moon and is, lives a life of Kedusha, then he, he rises. Uh, he, he rises, he rises higher and higher, a higher level. He's higher than all the Torah and all the mitzvahs. All the commandments, but But if he messes up on these two things, either on um, idol worship or having relations with a uh, an aramit, uh, that is makes a defect of all aspects of the Torah. It's such a serious theme. and the aspect of amuna. The power of Amuna is planted, is rooted in the in the Jew, and it flows through the Jew's blood. As Hashem said to Moshe, "My children are uh, my children are believers, and uh, sorry, Bnei Yisrael, Maminim." Children of Israel are believers, b'nei mamini, children of believers. Shekoach zeh, yesh lano od mi Avraham Avinu. We have this power that came to us from Avraham Avinu. Shehashrishu lechol hadoros, that he planted it for all the generations to come, all the generations of Jews to come, planted this amunah. Uh, and this is an important point. Even if a person doesn't feel his amuna, you know, things are happening. I just don't feel strong in my amuna. I don't know. I'm really worried. What's going on? If you feel, if you, if you don't really feel the amuna, sorry, lahamin, kihu mamin. You must believe that you, in fact, are a believer. Maybe you don't feel it right now, but you must believe that it is a genetic part of your body like any other part of your body. Amuna, as a Jew, is ingrained. It's it's one of your roots. Rak sha'avi machasim esor amuna. Oh, you have plenty of amuna. Just that the clouds are covering the light of your amuna. Avabnibios, but inside... Inside, internally, your soul knows and feels the amuna because it's a part of your, uh, it's flowing in your blood, so to speak. It's a part of your genetic makeup. All of the, the doubts and the the bad thoughts that befall a Jew, God forbid. Uh, these only come from a defect in the level of reaching a state of holiness. Uh, the, the, the defect of immorality uh, that begins in your mind and in your knowledge. It says Adam knew his wife. And improper, uh, immoral acts make your 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 mind uh, tummy, make your mind unclean, unfit to serve God. And the, the mind then causes a, a great defect in your level of amuna. When Hashem said to the snake, the snake is referred to as the head of all evil in the world. That 
man will trample on your head, and you will bite his heel. Who is Shofech Rosh, who trample on your head? Perush Binyane Rosh, meaning things having to do with your head. Binyan Hamuna, Binyan Deos, Shehu Bamoach. The aspect of Amuna and the aspect of knowledge that is in your in your mind. And this is this is the the eternity that a person has uh, when 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 he recognizes that this amuna is planted within him. But Hashem tells a snake, you biting his his heel. What does that mean? Vinyani Kadusha, the aspects of holiness. That means the, the, the lower part of the foundation of a person is the heel. Uh, uh, sorry. So on uh, that, the, the sitra acher is, is stronger. And when the sitra acher the, the satan, the negative influences, uh, makes you tummy and these kinds of things, hogim gamba also. It starts there, starts with the immorality, and then also causes a defect in your amuna. When you were doing ba'od b'ksuvim, and it's, the, Torah, the Torah talks about, talks a lot about this. Which never it says, the people began to uh, have these immoral relations with the daughters of Moab. Yatma Yisrael and the natural consequence was that they then were standing and affixing themselves <laughs> next to the idol poor. That was the first pagam. The first part was the actions they were having with these daughters of Moab. Excuse me. Uh, this was the intention of, of Bilam. He said he realized he's not going to be able to, to successfully curse the children of Israel. But the ace in the hole that he had was to get them to be matame, to make unclean uh, your your head. Because that would cause a defect in your amuna, in the amuna of the Jewish people. And from this, the defect would continue. It would lead, this would lead directly to idol worship. So since the 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 root of of this defect was this the immorality that was taking place with the daughters of Moab, Al came therefore Kina Pinchas. Pinchas was um, a, a, a zealot, Lomosrus Napsho, and he risked his life. To repair this aspect, uh, which is the root that's going to lead to Avodah Zorah. Gomer uh, Chazal, and the sages said in the Gomer Avodah Zorah, Arotzi Lakor Avodah Zorah, Yishras Yishras Achreha. Somebody who wants to uproot idol worship should. Uh, uproot its roots as well. Kasha Yeshanam Eitzel Yehudi Pagamim Bemunaso. When a Jew has difficulties in his amuna, Simon Shiyeshno Shoros Lakach. It's a it's a sign that there's 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 a root somewhere for this. Sharik Omar Etzem Hamuna Tavot Tchunas Nafsho Shayudi because we know that the main part of, of Amuna is firmly implanted in a Jew. 
שהרי כלומר עצם הוא אמור לתת נפשו ישוד, אם בכל זה, אין הפתיעס אולי בו הר הורם וספקוס ואמונוס, אכלו הרצון, even though this, this level of אמון is planted at you, in you from all these generations, if, if with this you still have uh, improper thoughts and doubts uh, in אמונה, השורש לזה הוא מפגמים הידועים. So the, the root is in the, uh, in the in the bad thoughts and the doubts. The root is spekus uh, uh, doubt in amuna. Ashorish lezehu bepagamim haiduim. The root of this is well known uh, defects. Shem ashorish pora rosh laana the meru nimchachim apagamim amuna. The things the the root causes. of a lack of amuna, those things are present, and your amuna leaves you uh, because of that. Okay, Pinchas, lo nigash letakin es achet shal avodah Therefore, Pinchas wasn't going to uh, try to repair uh, and fix this sin of, of idol worship, because he knew that wasn't the the cause of it. Uh, He went after the root cause of the idol worship, which is the sin with the daughters of Moab. Because directly flowing that was the sin of the idol worship of Poor. And the, re the reason why this was given to Pinchas to do instead of Moshe Rabbeinu, Yesh Lanu Behekdeim, Dehine Tchilas Klipas Bilam Mubalak, Kvar Klipas Amalek. We have to understand that the 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 bad qualities of Bilam and Balak derive dire directly from Amalek, Amalek who attacked the Jews just before receiving the Torah. Pudisim Azor HaKodesh, Azor HaKodesh says about this, Shtei HaOsios VaAchronos, the two last letters of the two names, Bilam, Ayimem, Balak, Lamed Kuf, Heim Amalek, that spells Amalek. Shamalek Hu Shorish HaKliba, because Amalek is the root cause of the, the, the bad qualities. Amalek nilchab Yisrael gam came with shtei and yanim elu, and Amalek fights with Bnei Yisrael with these two things as well: morality and holiness. When the Amar Asher Korch Baderach, as it said, when when Amalek was attacking the Jews before we received the Torah, it says literally Asher Korch Baderach, the Jews he met on the way. Shapiris Rashi, Rashi explained on this, he had commented, Shu Lashon Tu means uh, they were Tuma, they were unclean, not fit to serve God. Shurotzu Latame Eskla Yisraeli. He, uh, Amalek, wanted to make all of Yisrael Tame so that they couldn't couldn't serve the Lord. Vesifriya Kodesh, Isa Sherkar Chamilashon Karirus. The holy books. use the same language of Asher Karacha from the word kar, meaning that they were they were cold in their service to God. Hainush Kariros, but they were cold in their amuna. And both of these are the words of living God. In other words, uh, the two the two opinions that, that we just that we just cited, that one that Uh, it referred to a uh, weakening of Amuna, uh, and the other, a, uh, a lessening of the holiness. And those two things, and that those were the things that uh, were the roots of B'nai Yisrael, and he wanted to interfere with that. It says after... Uh, It says just before crossing the Yamsuf, 
that Bnei Israel believed in God and Moshe, his servant. Even in Egypt, when the Jewish people were ensconced in the 49 levels of uncleanliness, there was a Muna also there. Because that they're because of the they they're becoming tomei unclean by an improper relationship. Um, that's why they came into a state of kriros of being cold in their service to God, with Sveikos, uh, Hamuna, and uh, uh, doubting their Hamuna. So this is how a Malik thought he could be victorious over Mene Yisrael. Not from a physical standpoint, but from a spiritual standpoint by making them doubt their Amuna. And it's interesting, when did a Malik come? He came to came to Bnei Yisrael just before we received the Torah. At that point, before receiving the Torah, the Jewish people were at a very high high level. They left Mitzrayim. We're told they're the chosen people. So therefore. The klipa, klipa literally means the outer covering, the thing you throw away. In this case, it means the the bad qualities of a Malik, uh came to uh, make them fall from this high level that they're at. It says in the Gemara Sukkos, Gemara Sukkos, excuse me, that uh, the degree that a person is greater than somebody else, to that degree, his Yetzir Hara will be greater. His, his desire to do wrong will be even greater. Whenever a Jew goes up higher, the Yetzir Hara works harder to cause him to fall. At this time, when the children of Israel are on such a high level, they're ready to go receive the Torah. This clip of Amalek came against them. Every Jew, when they start going higher and higher in their spirituality, when they come to good times and they're ready to go higher and higher, and these times the Yitzhahor becomes more difficult to cause the to cause the Jew to to fall. Rav Kodesh, the Bordech of Sukhsulani, a story about the Bordech of Rebbe, the Shepam Achas Lacher Kol Nidre, boy, love I used one time after Kol Nidre, Kol Nidre, he was on the highest level. You can imagine the, the Kedushas Levi. Uh, he was on, you know, barely on this earth. He's on such a high level. And nonetheless, it says he was thrown down like beneath a thousand a thousand Jews uh, that he uh, was brought down from the lofty heights. Sha'inu moving and it's hard to understand. How does this happen to such a tzaddik as the Badish Rebbe and also on Kaldidra night? 
means just teaching us that no matter how high uh, how high a Jew a Jew reaches. The Yitzhara becomes even stronger to make you to make you fall. And I'm sure many of us see this in our own life. Our own lives when we start to we think we're getting to a higher level. And then something comes in or someone comes in and kind of shoots the air out of our balloon and brings us down to earth and more than that brings us below the earth. Uh, and that's what he's that's what he's talking about that. Same thing with Bilam and Balak. Sham the Israel, the Connors there to Israel. Mahasi Ba Kadusha Ayona. Bnei Israel was ready to go get the, the highest level of, of holiness. And Lakach um, Gabra Oz Kinegdam Klipas Bilam. And therefore, the, the Klipa of Bilam uh, was trying to cause them to fall. Shu Hoya Rosh HaKlipa Binyan Mailu. Bilam was the the head, the head of of wickedness uh, at, at this time. And these kinds of things. Viadua das Elyon, and he knew, he knew he was, you know, even though he was a wicked person, he was also also had powers, uh, spiritual powers to know things. So he knew. Uh, He knew the thing that would would be most likely to separate the Jews from their service to God and from their closeness to God. Das Klipa, he knew the the, the bad quality. Yisrael He came to to destroy the the two levels that a Jew must have, Amuna and Kedusha. Uh, through these actions of the Benot Moab and Baal Peor. And we find in the war of Amali, Shomer Moshe Yeshua, Moshe said to Yeshua, Choose for yourself men that should go out and fight Amali. Yeshua was a descendant of Yosef Atzarek. Moshe Amar Lo, Moshe said to him, choose people. Kedisi was our Kodesh, our Kodesh says, Zakoyim b'ni, Zakoyim diyas chazan lemach amad. Tainu anashim shalacha kamocha. Choose people just like you. Meaning, Mizer and Yosef, people who come from the, the seed of Joseph. It's Yosef at Tzadik. But he, but, uh, because Yosef was, uh, he withstood all the temptations in the world. Uh, and you, as, as a descendant of his, have that same ability to withstand. And Moshe was able to repair the, the level of Amuna, as it says, uh, his hands, Moshe's hands were Amunda, were faith, faith in God. But to, to repair the aspect of holiness. For this, you need somebody from the, the, the tribe of Yosef. Therefore, he sent a descendant of, of uh, Yosef, who was Yeshua. And uh, other people who are descendants. Shem Yilachmu Bigabrut Kalita Amalek Binyani Bris Kodesh. So they they fought against the 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 bad qualities of Amalek with regard to morality that a Jew is supposed to adhere to. Kmoken Hoyakan Atikun Ayyade Pinchas. And this 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 repair had to come through through Pinchas, 
who also was a descendant of Yosef. Shomer Hazal, as our sages say in Gemara Sota, sages said I had to move the page so I could see it better <laughs> instead of just half. Bibnot uh, Putiel, Mazer Yisro, Shapita, Agon, Lavarazora. So the difference between Moshe and, and Pinchas was Moshe uh, was actually married to the daughter of his father-in-law who wasn't Jewish. Um, and, uh, but but uh, Yosef was, was true to his colors, so to speak. So therefore, anybody descendant from Joseph Yosef would it be able to repair the destruction caused by uh, the daughters of Moab? This Indian Amuna tiktu Moshe v'chol Yisrael, and with regard to Amuna, belief in God, uh, Moshe and all Bnei Yisrael uh, decreed k'mosh v'targim yonos and afal al pasuk v'heima v'ochim when all the people were crying at their tents because of the plague. The Inu Karin Shema, and we were saying Shema. Moshe of Targum Yonason, as Targum Yonason says, Alapasuk Behema Bochim, when it says that they were crying. The Inu Karin Shema, they weren't reading the Shema. I know Shemoshe Baha Yisrael, Karo Shema, this teaches us that Moshe and Albany Yisrael were reading the Shema, Shu Yasod Hamuna. Which is the foundation of of Emuna? That God is one, God is our God, and God is one. But to to rectify the uh, immorality. Pinchas from the, the descent of Yosef was specifically needed. And he was able to deal with this, this, this uh, the foundation of this uh, bad quality, this licentiousness. And this also is the problem that we have right now in the days before Mashiach comes. Bishtei and Yanim Elon, these two things. The call the Kamas Shemak Rivim El Hagaula. The call the Kamas, to the extent somebody wants to come closer to the redemption, Alagilu Yahagado Shal Mashiach, and to come closer to the the great redemption of Mashiach, Kach Misgaber Yotzar Yetzer Hora Ben Yanim Elon. So too, as you are, as we are preparing for Mashiach and trying to get stronger. In our Yiddishkeit, so too the Yitzhar Hora is preparing uh, just the opposite. Matiku Ya'ide Mashiach ben Yosef. The full rectification will be from Mashiach ben Yosef, who Mashiach ben Mashiach ben David, and Mashiach ben David, the two, the two Mashiachs. Mashiach ben Yosef on the physical end and Mashiach ben David on the spiritual end. Shekodu Yitaki Mashiach ben Yosef has begun a breeze before Mashiach ben Yosef can fix these, these immoral defects. Machikach Yom Mashiach ben David. Then after that, once he fixes them, then Mashiach ben David will come. Shedavid hu Midas Malchus. Midas Hamuna. David Amelech was the quality of Malchus, of kingship, and the quality of Amuna. When you talk in Indian Amuna, he, he repaired the aspect of Amuna. And this is why the sentence reads, uh, The whole world will uh, be full of the knowledge of God. So these two things, 
Kedusha and Tahara, holiness and pure and and uh Kedushim and uh Kedushim and Tahara yeah, being tired from these bad things, being pure from these things. By Huli Lilba with Pinchas, a Jew has to learn from Pinchas. Shoyish Echad, he was one person who was serious nafsho, and by by his Messiah's nefesh, we always think, what can one person do? He was one person, and with his Messiah's nefesh, with his willingness to do whatever it took to try to save his people, with that Messiah's nefesh, he said, call Israel one person, saved all of Israel. He removed God's anger from the children of Israel. Look, he leads by Israel, and God has Shalom didn't destroy uh, the children of Israel. Kivin Shakal Yisrael, Arayim Zelazah. All Jews are responsible, guarantors for one another, responsible for one another. Bokas Kvokain, similarly, Kashri Yehudi, Mishkaber Ben Yanim Elu. The Messiah's Nefesh for Omei Ben Yisrael, when a person is faced with these difficult tax and tasks, and is able to withstand them, and he he goes through the tests. Ariel, maybe Israel, the Klal Yisrael, that will bring, uh, maybe Yeshua, the Klal Yisrael, that will bring salvation to all of Israel. So the 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 key of, the key of these things is we can't look at. These as isolated incidents. We have to know as the as the as it says in Pirkei Avos, mitzvah gereres mitzvah, avera gereres avera. One mitzvah leads to another. One avera leads to another sin. One sin leads to another sin. And this is exactly what was happening here. Here they thought they were just having these lustful things, and just a physical thing. And no, it led to avodah zara, uh, and that's. Something we all have to be aware of in our own in our own lives to have this introspection to make sure that uh, we nip in the bud anything that could could lead us on the wrong path and recognize that uh, the minute you start giving in a little bit, it just goes like a snowball after that. Thank you for listening, uh, and I will close the. Recording now and then take any comments.